Patrick Reams with Comtech Advisory. Uh, welcome to our latest video and our conversations with leaders in CTRM technology. Uh, today we're visiting with Dr. Marcus Seiser, COO of FIS Energy. Marcus, thanks for being here. Welcome, Patrick, to our offices. Yeah, thanks so much. It's always nice to come down even on a stormy day such as today. Uh, we're here today specifically to talk about the results mm -hmm. of our latest research project of which FIS Energy sponsored, and mm -hmm. we very much appreciate that yeah, sponsorship we'll, we'll and in. help bring this research to market. Mm -hmm. Uh, this research was focused specifically looking at the implications and mm -hmm. the impacts of low energy commodity prices on the underlying systems, the ETRM, CTRM mm -hmm. systems, that so much of the industry is, is relying upon today. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to look at how these systems were being used, what critical capabilities were being used, and really understand the value proposition mm -hmm. uh, given these low energy prices. So let's just jump into it uh, and look at our first question. Uh, we ask in the survey, what pressing, what's the most pressing ETRM system challenge given this current price yeah. environment? Uh, the number one response of our responding group was having to deal with a number of disparate systems mm -hmm. and the integration challenges that presents mm -hmm. and being able to get the critical information and data in order to make sound mm -hmm. business decisions in this low price environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, does FIS have a recommended approach uh, to address this long simmering technology mm -hmm. issue of caused by all these disparate systems and integration mm -hmm. challenges? I think, let, let's be honest, the reality is that when you look on ETRM projects, I think the most challenging parts of those projects are in nearly every time the, the integration and the reporting. Mm -hmm. So we like a lot of other leading players um, provide what we call an integration framework mm -hmm. to make integration as simple as possible and to allow to scale the integration, to monitor the integration and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be honest, what sounds simple to us mm -hmm. is sometimes not so simple to clients which are not so IT savvy as we are. Sure. So logically what, what we then do is we increased our offerings and we increased our responsibilities. So besides providing the framework, we are t willing to take more responsibility when it comes to build the integration and also maintain, maintain the integration. Mm -hmm. Because we feel a part of the integration will always be custom. Mm -hmm. Let's take the market interfaces aside and they require custom service. And we decided to move into this direction to also provide custom service to take off a little bit of the pain of mm -hmm. the clients. In terms of uh, the most important or highest priority ETRM capabilities mm -hmm. uh, that were noted by our survey respondents when they, they start to think about risks in mm -hmm. this current marketplace, uh, risk analytics, risk reporter were most often cited. Mm -hmm. Then we also see that intraday trading capabilities and optimization, both mm -hmm. in terms of trading and asset uh, mm -hmm. focused uh, optimization strategies, also ranked very high in terms of critical ETRM capabilities. Uh, does this result surprise you in any way? No, not, not really. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen this trend. We have seen this trend in a lot of conversations we had on the market too, and I'm not surprised that it's the outcome of the survey. Mm -hmm. But let's just put the facts together. The more liquid a market is, mm -hmm. the, the lower the margins are. Mm -hmm. So we see this in the energy markets, and I know of some clients which need to trade up to 10 times more volume mm -hmm. than they had to do five or more years ago right. in order to generate the same margin contribution. Mm -hmm. So this requires more work to get to the same outcome. Right. Yeah? So what those companies are looking for, are looking into, are opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest, opportunity, biggest opportunities currently is short-term trading. Mm -hmm. So this, this requires some investment and requires some uh, s some IT and real-time capabilities, but it generates you bigger margins. Mm -hmm. And in order to generate these bigger margins, you need to you need to put your asset to the market in the best in, in the best in the best way. And so, short-term intraday opti optimization combined with algorithmic and programmatic trading mm -hmm. is one of the success factors when you want to enter into this market. Mm -hmm. Uh, continuing that, that, risk, uh, that theme of risks, uh, we, we also asked what, uh, under the current market conditions, mm -hmm. what our, our response view is the most pressing risks mm -hmm. that they are faced with on a daily basis. 
And obviously, uh, credit and market liquidity mm -hmm. rank very high, along with regulatory and, and clearly price risk mm -hmm. are also ranked up there near the top, almost yeah. equally in terms of the respondents. Do ETRM, CTRM solutions have a role in, in helping to ameliorate these types of risks? Yes, of course they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think market and credit risk is a core function mm -hmm. of uh, every ETRM, CTRM system. And this is, has to be constantly developed, developed mm -hmm. further. We recently see also a bigger trend when it comes to liquidity risks. Mm -hmm. So therefore, um, we added features, so offering features like CVA, or DVA calculations, mm -hmm. and we also using other FIS libraries to, to provide um, FVA calculations, so f the funding value adjustments, mm -hmm. in order to address the liquidity ris issues. Mm -hmm. The regulatory risk is a little bit a, a challenging topic because sure. you don't know what you don't know. Right. Yeah. Right. And we see changes, um, changes coming quickly, like recently Dot Frank, or mm -hmm. since ju early July, the market abuse regulation is 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 in place in in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. I think for us, the only chance is to stay close to regulatory entities, make mm -hmm. sure we understand what's w what's coming up, and m make sure we adapt the software as quickly in time what they need. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, one of the most striking results that we saw as a result of the survey uh, was that 60% of the respondents said that mm -hmm. the current market conditions would make them consider pursuing a hosted or a managed mm -hmm. services type strategy. Yeah. Uh, another 20% said it wouldn't, and mm -hmm. another 20% said it. You know, they just weren't sure. Mm -hmm. But but clearly, the 60% was the uh, was was a clear message to the mm -hmm. marketplace. I, I know that FIS has a strategy in terms of hosting and managed mm -hmm. services. Um, so could you give us your, your thoughts around this growing market yeah. opportunity that we see out there? Again, this is also something that's not surprising. We have seen this. We have seen this years ago in the treasury space, for example, and the trend, trend continues. Mm -hmm. Energy was for a very long time a quite, I would say, classical market mm -hmm. where everybody wants to own everything in-house. But there is a trend in this price pressure that you want to turn CapEx and OpEx expenses mm -hmm. into, more, uh, into more a predictable flat fee. Mm -hmm. Secondly, companies also recognized that they can not leverage eco economies of scale, mm -hmm. which potentially the vendor could. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there is the trend to hosting. But I think let's pause here and think about, give it a little bit more holistic view. Just putting the hosting outside mm -hmm. doesn't really help you Right. from my perspective, because you just get the, the, the building, the air condition, and the power supply. <laughs> um, but the, the classical hosting provider is not able to provide additional services what, uh, what, the, what the application needs. Right. And these are basically two things. One is at least making a so-called application availability service to make sure the application is working and is ready for use. Mm -hmm. But what we have in our high-end application managed service is, mm -hmm. is we make sure the application is running as implemented. So mm -hmm. if you, for example, host with FIS and have the managed services from FIS, we make sure when you come to the office in the morning that um, the end of day has run properly, we have a mitigation strategy, something fails, we, have, we, we made sure that all the imports and the, and the reports have been running mm -hmm. in order that the system is working when you come in the morning as implemented. Mm -hmm. This goes as far that those companies don't even need a, D, uh, a DBA anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and this we are offering for a flat fee. So taking on more risk and you just mm -hmm. have to do your job where you need to focus on. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Um, last question, I think we're, we're getting close to running out of time, but uh, I did want to touch on this. We asked respondents if their ETRM mm -hmm. system uh, helped them respond mm -hmm. to new business opportunities mm -hmm. as they arose in what is this rather difficult market. Less than a third mm -hmm. indicated their systems do provide such capability. Mm -hmm. uh, are those that respond to the negative simply missing functionality or capability or is uh, there truly a limit to the role that the ETRM, mm -hmm. CTRM systems can play in this, ma in this market and in that manner? Okay. I think there are various answers to that. Mm -hmm. I think one answer could logically be that, it, that there are limits in the system and this could be the case. Mm -hmm. Remember, there are a lot of systems out there and mm -hmm. some systems were made for a certain purpose, for plug and play. Mm -hmm. and there are a lot of changes with compliance, with sh short-term trading and others where potentially they're reaching the limits. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of other systems do have the capabilities to extend the system. 
Yeah, they have an open architecture uh, when it comes to scalability and flexibility, which mm -hmm. provide enough capability around deal modeling, risk modeling, up to integration of external risk kernels. All this f f uh, flows nicely into reporting and allows an open integration. Mm -hmm. So I think part of it is the system itself, and sometimes there is the flexibility, but you need to understand how to handle the flexibility. And here I do have a recommendation is when you have when you use those flexibilities to make quick fixes, make sure that you always have a close relation to the vendor, mm -hmm. because sometimes when you need the time to market, it is basically something what the system should do, mm -hmm. and you use the flexibility in order to accomplish this time to market. Mm -hmm. But you always need to try to stay close to the standard, and this short-term fix or short-term implementation should flow into the core product later on mm -hmm. to make sure that you are staying closer to the mainstream, staying closer to the standard, in order to make sure that the upgrades uh, run smoothly going forward. Mm. And that you don't end up on an orphan system at some point. True, in yeah. The future. Customization can be, can be, a, can be a blessing, mm -hmm. but sometimes if it's used too extensively, mm -hmm does lead you to a place where you don't want to be. <laughs> for sure. Uh, I'm afraid that's all we got time for, but uh, as always, it's always great to be able to sit and visit with you, yeah, Marcus. Okay. I appreciate uh, the time and, yeah. and the opportunity. Th thank you. Thank you very much, and hope uh, looking forward to our next visit. Absolutely. Uh, so that's it for us today and this uh, episode of uh, Conversations with Leaders in CTRM. Uh, be sure that you look for additional videos on our website, comtechadvisory.com, or on the CTRM Center at ctrmcenter.com. Uh, thanks so much. Mm -hmm.